Degrowth French, Decoissance is a political, economic, and social movement based on ecological economics, anti-consumerist and anti-capitalist ideas. It is also considered an essential economic strategy responding to the limits to growth dilemma see the path to degrowth in overdeveloped countries and post-growth. Degrowth thinkers and activists advocate for the downscaling of production and consumption, the contraction of economies, arguing that overconsumption lies at the root of long-term environmental issues and social inequalities. Key to the concept of degrowth is that reducing consumption does not require individual martyring or a decrease in well-being. Rather, degrowthers aim to maximize happiness and well-being through non-consumptive means. Sharing work, consuming less, while devoting more time to art, music, family, nature, culture and community. Background The movement arose from concerns over the perceived consequences of the productivism and consumerism associated with industrial societies whether capitalist or socialist including the reduced availability of energy sources see peak oil the declining quality of the environment see global warming pollution threats to biodiversity the decline in the health of flora and fauna upon which humans depend see holocene extinction the rise of negative societal side effects see unsustainable development poorer health poverty the ever-expanding use of resources by first world countries to satisfy lifestyles that consume more food and energy, and produce greater waste, at the expense of the third world See neocolonialism. <laughs> Resource depletion As economies grow, the need for resources grows accordingly unless there are changes in efficiency or demand for different products due to price changes. There is a fixed supply of non-renewable resources, such as petroleum oil, and these resources will inevitably be depleted. Renewable resources can also be depleted if extracted at unsustainable rates over extended periods. For example, this has occurred with caviar production in the Caspian Sea. There is much concern as to how growing demand for these resources will be met as supplies decrease. Many organizations and governments look to energy technologies such as biofuels, solar cells, and wind turbines to meet the demand gap after peak oil. Others have argued that none of the alternatives could effectively replace versatility and portability of oil. Authors of the book Techno Fix criticize technological optimists for overlooking the limitations of technology in solving agricultural and social challenges arising from growth. Proponents of degrowth argue that decreasing demand is the only way of permanently closing the demand gap. For renewable resources, demand, and therefore production, must also be brought down to levels that prevent depletion and are environmentally healthy. Moving toward a society that is not dependent on oil is seen as essential to avoiding societal collapse when non-renewable resources are depleted. Ecological footprint The ecological footprint is a measure of human demand on the Earth's ecosystems. It compares human demand with planet Earth's ecological capacity to regenerate. It represents the amount of biologically productive land and sea area needed to regenerate the resources a human population consumes and to absorb and render harmless the corresponding waste. According to a 2005 Global Footprint Network report, inhabitants of high-income countries live off of 6.4 global hectares GHA, while those from low-income countries live off of a single GHA. For example, while each inhabitant of Bangladesh lives off of what they produce from 0.56 GHA, a North American requires 12.5 GHA. Each inhabitant of North America uses 22.3 times as much land as a Bangladeshi. According to the same report, the average number of global hectares per person was 2.1. While current consumption levels have reached 2.7 hectares per person. In order for the world's population to attain the living standards typical of European countries, the resources of between three and eight planet Earths would be required with current levels of efficiency and means of production. In order for world economic equality to be achieved with the current available resources, proponents say rich countries would have to reduce their standard of living through degrowth. The constraints on resources would eventually lead to a forced reduction in consumption. Controlled reduction of consumption would 
Reduce the trauma of this change assuming no technological changes increase the planet's carrying capacity. Degrowth and sustainable development Degrowth thought is in opposition to all forms of productivism the belief that economic productivity and growth is the purpose of human organization. It is, thus, opposed to the current form of sustainable development. While the concern for sustainability does not contradict degrowth, sustainable development is rooted in mainstream development ideas that aim to increase capitalist growth and consumption. Degrowth therefore sees sustainable development as an oxymoron, as any development based on growth in a finite and environmentally stressed world is seen as inherently unsustainable. Critics of degrowth argue that a slowing of economic growth would result in increased unemployment, increased poverty and decrease income per capita. Many who understand the devastating environmental consequences of growth still advocate for economic growth in the South, even if not in the North. But, a slowing of economic growth would fail to deliver the benefits of degrowth self sufficiency, material responsibility and would indeed lead to decreased employment. Rather, degrowth proponents advocate for a complete abandonment of the current growth economic system, suggesting that relocalizing and abandoning the global economy in the global south would allow people of the south to become more self sufficient and would end the overconsumption and exploitation of southern resources by the north. Topic. Rebound effect Technologies designed to reduce resource use and improve efficiency are often touted as sustainable or green solutions. Degrowth literature, however, warns about these technological advances due to the «rebound effect». This concept is based on observations that when a less resource-exhaustive technology is introduced, behavior surrounding the use of that technology may change, and consumption of that technology could increase or even offset any potential resource savings. In light of the rebound effect, proponents of degrowth hold that the only effective sustainable solutions must involve a complete rejection of the growth paradigm and a move toward a degrowth paradigm. There are also fundamental limits to technological solutions in the pursuit of degrowth, as all engagements with technology increase the cumulative matter-energy throughput. However, the convergence of digital commons of knowledge and design with distributed manufacturing technologies may arguably hold potential for building degrowth future scenarios. <laughs> Origins of the movement The contemporary degrowth movement can trace its roots back to the anti-industrialist trends of the 19th century, developed in Great Britain by John Ruskin, William Morris and the Arts and Crafts Movement 1819 in the United States by Henry David Thoreau 1817 and in Russia by Leo Tolstoy 1828 .The concept of «degrowth» proper appeared during the 1970s, proposed by André Gortz 1972, and intellectuals such as Nicholas George Skurogan, Jean Baudrillard, Edward Goldsmith and Ivan Illich, whose ideas reflect those of earlier thinkers, such as the economist E. J. Mission, the industrial historian Tom Rolt, and the radical socialist Tony Turner. The writings of Mahatma Gandhi and J. C. Kumarappa also contain similar philosophies, particularly regarding his support of voluntary simplicity. More generally, degrowth movements draw on the values of humanism, enlightenment, anthropology and human rights. <laughs> Club of Rome reports In 1968, the Club of Rome, a think tank headquartered in Winterthur, Switzerland, asked researchers at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology for a report on practical solutions to problems of global concern. The report, called The Limits to Growth, published in 1972, became the first important study that indicated the ecological perils of the unprecedented economic growth the world was experiencing at the time. The reports, also known as the Meadows Reports, are not strictly the founding texts of the degrowth movement, as these reports only advise zero growth and have also been used to support the sustainable development movement. Still, they are considered the first official studies explicitly presenting economic growth as a key reason for the increase in global environmental problems such as pollution, shortage of raw materials, and the destruction of ecosystems. A second report was published in 1974, and together with the first, drew considerable attention to the topic.
Topic: <laughs> Lasting influence of George Q. Rogan. The degrowth movement recognizes Romanian-American mathematician, statistician and economist Nicholas George Q. Rogan as the main intellectual figure inspiring the movement. In his magnum opus on the entropy law and the economic process, George Q. Rogan argues that economic scarcity is rooted in physical reality, that all natural resources are irreversibly degraded when put to use in economic activity, that the carrying capacity of Earth—that is, Earth's capacity to sustain human populations and consumption levels, is bound to decrease sometime in the future as Earth's finite stock of mineral resources is presently being extracted and put to use, and consequently, that the world economy as a whole is heading towards an inevitable future collapse. George Q. Rogan's intellectual inspiration to de growth goes back to the 1970s. When George Q. Rogan delivered a lecture at the University of Geneva in 1974, he made a lasting impression on the young and newly graduated French historian and philosopher Jacques Grinevald, who had earlier been introduced to George Q. Rogan's magnum opus by an academic advisor. George Q. Rogan and Grinevald soon made friends, and Grinevald started devoting his research to a closer study of George Q. Rogan's work. As a result, in 1979 Grinevald published a French translation of a selection of George Skew Rogan's articles entitled Domaine la décoissance, Entropie Ecologie Economie, Tomorrow, The Decline, Entropy, Ecology, Economy. George Skew Rogan, who spoke French fluently, personally approved the use of the term décoissance in the title of the French translation. The book gained influence in French intellectual and academic circles from the outset. Later, the book was expanded and republished in 1995, and once again in 2006. However, the word domain tomorrow was removed from the title of the book in these second and third editions. By the time Grinevald suggested the term décoissance to form part of the title of the French translation of George Q. Rogan's work, this term had already disseminated through French intellectual circles since the early 1970s to signify a deliberate political action to downscale the economy on a permanent and voluntary basis. Simultaneously, but independently hereof, George Q. Rogan had criticized the ideas of the limits to growth and Herman Daly's steady state economy in his pointed and polemical article on energy and economic myths, delivered as a series of lectures from 1972 and onwards at various places, but not published in print before 1975. In this article, George Q. Rogan stated the following view. When reading this particular passage of the text, Grinevald realized that no professional economist of any orientation had ever reasoned like this before. Grinevald also realized the striking conceptual resemblance between George Q. Rogan's viewpoint and the French debates progressing by the time, this resemblance then transformed into the title of the French edition. Taken together, the translation of George Q. Rogan's work into French both fed on and gave further impetus to the concept of décoissance in the country and everywhere else in the francophone world thereby creating something of an intellectual feedback loop by the 2000s when décoissance was to be translated from french and back into english as the catchy banner for the new social movement the original term decline was now deemed inappropriate and misdirected for the purpose decline usually refers to an unexpected unwelcome and temporary economic recession something bad to be avoided or quickly overcome Instead, the neologism de growth was coined to signify a deliberate political action to downscale the economy on a permanent and voluntary basis as in the prevailing French usage of the term something good to be welcomed and maintained, or so followers believe. When the first international de growth conference of its kind was held in Paris in 2008, the participants bestowed a generous amount of credit and appreciation on George Q. Rogan and his work. Further, in his manifesto on petty trait de la décoissance serene farewell to growth, leading French champion of the degrowth movement Serge Latouche has credited George Q. Rogan as a main theoretical source of degrowth. Likewise, Italian degrowth theorist Mauro Benayuti has considered George Q. Rogan's work to be one of the analytical cornerstones of the degrowth perspective. Topic: <laughs> Serge Latouche. Serge Latouche, a professor of economics at the University of Paris Sud, has noted that if you try to measure the reduction in the rate of growth by taking into account damages caused to the environment and its consequences on our natural and cultural patrimony, you will generally obtain a result of zero or even negative growth. In 1991, the United States spent $115 billion, or 2.1% of the GDP on the protection of the environment. 
The Clean Air Act increased this cost by 45 or 55 million dollars per year. The World Resources Institute tried to measure the rate of the growth taking into account the punishment exerted on the natural capital of the world, with an eye towards sustainable development. For Indonesia, it found that the rate of growth between 1971 and 1984 would be reduced from 7.1 to 4% annually, and that was by taking only three variables into consideration, deforestation, the reduction in the reserves of oil and natural gas, and soil erosion. Schumacher and Buddhist economics E. F. Schumacher's 1973 book Small is Beautiful predates a unified degrowth movement, but nonetheless serves as an important basis for degrowth ideas. In this book he critiques the neo-liberal model of economic development, arguing that an increasing «standard of living» based on consumption, is absurd as a goal of economic activity and development. Instead, under what he refers to as Buddhist economics, we should aim to maximize well-being while minimizing consumption. <coughs> Ecological and social issues In January 1972, Edward Goldsmith and Robert Prescott Allen—editors of The Ecologist Journal published a blueprint for survival, which called for a radical program of decentralization and deindustrialization to prevent what the authors referred to as, "...the breakdown of society and the irreversible disruption of the life support systems on this planet". <laughs> Degrowth movement Topic conferences The movement has also included international conferences, promoted by the Network Research and Degrowth in Paris 2008, Barcelona 2010, Montreal 2012, Venice 2012, Leipzig 2014, Budapest 2016, and Malmö 2018. Topic. Barcelona Conference 2010. The first international conference on economic degrowth for ecological sustainability and social equity of Paris 2008 was a discussion about the financial, social, cultural, demographic, environmental crisis caused by the deficiencies of capitalism and an explanation of the main principles of the degrowth. The second international conference of Barcelona on the other hand focused on specific ways to implement a degrowth society. Concrete proposals have been developed for future political actions, including Promotion of local currencies, elimination of fiat money and reforms of interest Transition to non-profit and small-scale companies Increase of local commons and support of participative approaches in decision-making Reducing working hours and facilitation of volunteer work Reusing empty housing and co-housing Introduction of the basic income and an income ceiling built on a maximum-minimum ratio Limitation of the exploitation of natural resources and preservation of the biodiversity and culture by regulations, taxes and compensations Minimize the waste production with education and legal instruments Elimination of mega-infrastructures, transition from a car-based system to a more local, biking, walking-based one Suppression of advertising from the public space in spite of the real willingness of reform and the development of numerous solutions. The Conference of Barcelona didn't have a big influence on the world economic and political system. Many critiques have been made concerning the proposals, mostly about the financial aspects, and this has refrained changes to occur. Topic: <laughs> Degrowth around the world. Although not explicitly called degrowth, movements using similar concepts and terminologies can be found around the world, such as Buen Vivir in Latin America or Eco Swaraj in India. <laughs> <laughs> Relation to other social movements The degrowth movement has a variety of relations to other social movements and alternative economic visions, which range from collaboration to partial overlap. The Konzeptwerk Neue Ökonomi Laboratory for New Economic Ideas, which hosted the 2014 International Degrowth Conference in Leipzig, has published a project entitled, ''Degrowth in Movements'' 
in 2017, which maps relationships with 32 other social movements and initiatives. Topic: Criticisms. Topic: Marxist critique. Marxists distinguish between two types of growth, that which is useful to mankind, and that which simply exists to increase profits for companies. Marxists consider that it is the nature and control of production that is the determinant, and not the quantity. They believe that control and a strategy for growth are the pillars that enable social and economic development. According to Jean Zinn, while the justification for degrowth is valid, it is not a solution to the problem. However, other Marxist writers have adopted positions close to the de Groth perspective. For example, John Bellamy Foster and Fred Magdoff, in common with David Harvey, Emanuel Wallerstein, Paul Sweezy and others focus on endless capital accumulation as the basic principle and goal of capitalism. This is the source of economic growth and, in the view of these writers, is unsustainable. Foster and Magdoff developed Marx's own concept of the metabolic rift, something he noted in The Exhaustion of Soils by Capitalist Systems of Food Production, though this is not unique to capitalist systems of food production as seen in the Aral Sea. <laughs> systems theoretical critique In stressing the negative rather than the positive sides of growth, the majority of de growth proponents remains focused on de growth, thus co-performing and further sustaining the actually criticized unsustainable growth obsession. One way out of this paradox might be in changing the reductionist vision of growth as ultimately economic concept, which proponents of both growth and de growth commonly imply, for a broader concept of growth that allows for the observation of growth in other function systems of society. A corresponding recoding of growth obsessed or capitalist organizations has recently been proposed. Topic See also Topic Notes Topic External links First International de Growth Conference in Paris 18–19 April 2008 Second Conference on Economic de Growth for Ecological Sustainability and Social Equity. Barcelona 26–29 March 2010 International Conference on de Growth in the Americas, Montreal, 13–19 May 2012 Three hours of audio from Montreal 2012, The Extra Environmentalist, podcast Video interviews and speeches from Montreal 2012, The Extra Environmentalist Third International Conference on de Growth for Ecological Sustainability and Social Equity, Venice, 19–23 September 2012 Peter Ainsworth on de Growth and Sustainable Development published on La Clé des Langues Club for de Growth CBC Ideas podcast the Degrowth Paradigm. 54 minutes. Toronto, the 10th of December 2013.